Recently I've been making some videos about the German language, really enjoying that, but on those videos people have actually asked me to check out this one. It's called How Anyone, Including You, Can Read German. So, I mean, that sounds like a challenge. I can't wait to watch this and see if I can. I'm pretty sure I'll learn something at least. Uh, and yeah, let's check it out. Tell me what you think about the video yourself. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This one's for lovers of English as much as lovers of German. German is hard. Learning it means studying an array of rules, mastering three grammatical genders, and knowing whether you're using the nominative, accusative, genitive, or dative. But in this video, we're ignoring all of that. I'm going to give you some simple tricks that are going to help your chances of understanding the German words written in front of you, whether they're on a billboard, a menu, or in a movie. By the end, we'll be able to decipher this gibberish to the untrained eye into something that any English speaker will be able to understand. No prior German knowledge required. Even if you don't want to learn German, do keep watching though, because the reasons why these tricks work tell us a lot about our own language. German and English have history. Los geht's. Let's go. So let's get that mystery document back up. The key to decoding this is mainly going to lie in swapping letters in and out to make these words look more like English. I go into exactly why it's possible and what it's got to do with all of these guys later, but the key point is that English and German are part of the same language family. They share a common ancestor that they both developed from, and by retracing that development, you can find consistencies in how they differ. So for example, where English developed a th sound in certain words, German went off in a slightly different direction and ended up with a d sound instead. So where English has three, German has drei. drei. Where English has thunder, German has donner. Hmm. English thing is German ding. And where English has the, German has seemingly endless numbers of words of various genders and cases, all of which basically mean the and begin with D. Hmm. And while we're here, actually, German has do and dine, which are two words that have the same ancestry as the age-old English words thou and thine. So hmm. there's our first trick. Swapping the D in a German word for TH can very often get you closer to the English equivalent. Now, linguistically speaking, the D sound is very similar to the T sound. The processes in our mouths to produce these sounds are extremely similar. Just a tiny tweak makes a T a D. And that's why you can also often swap a German T sound with TH as well, particularly in the middle or at the end of words like Mutter, which is mother, and mm. Wert, which is worth. This similarity between T and D sounds also opens up another letter swap opportunity, this time between the two languages. German T's can often be swapped for English D's. Take a look at these pairs. Dream, daughter and dear all have German equivalents beginning with T. Mm. Tier is actually the German word for animal, but that is precisely what deer originally meant in English before we decided to make it mean one animal in particular. In fact, the Dutch word for animal is still deer. Hmm. Dutch very often provides a satisfying midpoint between German and English, a bit like it does geographically, I suppose. Now back to German. The D swap works elsewhere in some words too. Check out under and leader becoming unter and leiter. Incidentally, leiter also means ladder. It's all D's and T's again. Now, while we're throwing T's around, that reminds me of another good swap. This time, instead of taking the T's out, we're going to slip them in, in the place of the S sound made by either one or two S's. Check out how neatly German Wasser becomes English water. Mm. The German word for what is Was. Mm. And if you apply two of our tricks to German Das, you get its English equivalent, that. And that, incidentally, in Old English, like das does in German, 
was the neuter version of the. So it works then as well. And another bonus fact, there are actually some German dialects that use vat and dat with a T at the end instead of an S, as does our friend from the Low Countries, Dutch. Oh, and let's bring in that most Germanic of characters, this fat, wiggly fellow, the SZ. Although its name literally means SZ or SZ, it actually replaces a double S. So if you see it, sub in a double S, then try swapping it with a T. For example, German Fuss becomes English mm. Foot, yeah, with a bit true. of imagination yeah. applied to the vowels. Now let's fling some more T's around because adding a T can also help us solve all of these words. By subbing it in for the T sound, usually expressed in German with a Z, we can get much closer to the English two, two, this time the number, and tongue. Mm. And there are plenty of others. Right, more of these to come, but I realise it's a lot to take in with all of these consonants flying around. I've become somewhat consonant incontinent, haven't I? <laughs> so, I mean, so far this is absolutely so interesting. I, of course, I knew about similarities, but to see these like rules or these little tips that how you can actually change in and out certain letters in it, it actually makes so much sense to me. It makes me actually very. It makes me want to learn, not learn German full time, but really take an interest in trying to learn more and uh, understand the similarities and see how, how much of German I can actually pick up, actually. Let's take a break to understand why these tricks work when they do, which I admit is not 100% of the time, but the hit rate is really good. We'll get to the cool reason just as soon as I've introduced you to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace empowers individuals to create their online web presence or launch their passion project. I created my own website using Squarespace and it was really simple. It's cleverly designed to enable you to easily move things around and change the look of your pages. There are also powerful analytics tools to tell you who is visiting your site and from where. Someone visited mine from Vietnam. And if your passion project involves setting up shop online, Squarespace can help you do that, including selling merchandise. And that reminds me, we need to come up with some good ideas for some t-shirts. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash robwords to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So earlier I said our translation tricks had something to do with all of these guys. Well, what did I mean? Well, what do Rapunzel, Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood and others have in common? The answer is that they're all fairy tales featured in the collections of Germany's famous Grimm's, brothers yeah, yeah. Grimm, sure. Wilhelm and Jakob. By the way, brother is another word that our tricks work on because you can just swap Bruder. the D in the middle of yeah, Bruder yeah, yeah. in German true. for a TH and you basically get brother. Anyway, Jakob here is our hero because as well as working with Seinem Bruder to bring together and reimagine European fairy tales, he was also a prolific linguist. So I mentioned earlier how English and German are from the same language family, the Germanic languages. In fact, more specifically, they're both Western Germanic languages. And Jakob Grimm was one of the driving forces behind an ingenious theory about how Germanic languages developed together, known as Grimm's Law. Long, long ago, probably in the first millennium BC, the Germanic languages went through a consonant shift that moved their consonant sounds away from those of Proto-Indo-European. That's the ancient ancestor Germanic languages share with other language families like the Romance languages, the Celtic languages, Slavic languages, and others like Sanskrit, for example. But the language that became modern High German, which is the most widely spoken form of German and the one we're talking about, went through an extra consonant shift that other Germanic languages, like English, did not. That left German with different consonant sounds to English, but those differences are remarkably consistent. And that's why we can often swap them in and out and get from one language to the other. Mm. So now you know the theory, let's get on to some more tricks. Another way that English and German diverged from one another is with the sounds P and F. And it means that a lot of F sounds in German written with an F, a double F or PF 
f can be swapped with a p to get you closer to the English. For example, German pfeffer is English pepper. Mm. Pfeiffer is pipe. They're both double whammies. But German auf has the same linguistic root as English up, and German hoffer is English hope. There are so many of these as well. Uh, Schiff and ship, apple and apple. This one really does work. So remember, when the English P, the Germans F. Hmm. I just want to say something is like, I learned German in school just for the, I think it is compulsory for the first two years of high school. And I was interested, I, I, I thought I did quite well, but obviously now that's a long time ago. But I feel like if they just had something as simple as this is their first lesson, it would have actually made the whole learning experience easier, quicker, probably got people to buy into it a lot, a lot more. Uh, it it kind of simplifies the, the relationship between the two languages in a way I've never actually seen before, which is quite interesting. So it gives me a bit of a it gives me a bit of an interest in learning more. Like I live in Malaysia, I speak Malaysian Bahasa Malayu. I learned it for a couple of years and then could speak quite well. There's a lot of similarities with English in that language as well. Uh, so I, my brain like has that like learning mentality. So it's like really, this is actually lighting a bit of a torch within me. Now the next swap is a piece of cake or in German, ein Stück Kuchen. You can often sub this CH in a German word for a K and get mm. closer to the English like Kuchen and cake. Also, German machen is English make, although it also means do as well. Suchen is related to English seek, and a German Buch is an English book. And again, actually, once you do these swaps, you basically get to the Dutch version of these words. Check out machen. So Dutch viewers do feel free to use these cheats with your own language too. German ich becomes Dutch ik, both of which mean I, and incidentally, Old English for I, as in, as in me, was E, <coughs> or something like it. My pronunciation of Old English is always dreadful. Anyway, that's all a Dutch distraction, because I was just going to point out that German <coughs> words that begin with a K often have an English equivalent beginning with C. Cake is a good example of that one as well. A German Kuh is a cow, Kreuz is a cross, and lots of others are really obvious, like Kultur and culture you're unlikely to struggle with ones like that. Now, any more for any more? Ah, yes. Hanging out at the end of the alphabet are W and Y, and they hold the key to another couple of handy switcheroos you can do. W for V try in British in or English. Or German Gs. Let's hmm. take the German word Tag. So we already know what to do with the T. We're swapping it for a D, aren't we? Remember dream and daughter? And now let's try, as I just suggested, removing the G and putting in a Y. We end up with day. What's the German for day? Mm. It's Tag. Another fascinating historical fact, the old English word for day was this. Notice anything? It has a G at the end, although it was actually pronounced more like a Y. It was die. Again, my old English is dreadful. Anyway, some more G and Y swaps. German Weg is English Way. German Sagen is English Say. If the Y doesn't work, just give a W a go. German Borgen is English Bow. Oh, and I've just thought of uh, another good one, actually. A lot of Bs in German are Vs in English. Take a look at the German words for live and indeed for liver. Also to give, which is geben, and to stick things together is kleben, which is a relative of English cleave. Cleave is a fascinating word because it can both mean to separate and to put together. Have you ever noticed that? Mm. Little doggy. Um, had enough of these yet? Well, don't make me stop before I get to my triple letter score trick with C-H-T. German words containing C-H-T often have a similar English word with G-H-T instead. I give you light, both in the sense of the shiny stuff and the stuff that's easy to lift. I also give you night, eight, and sight, and there are others. Ones to watch out for, though, nicht, 
means not rather than knight mm. and you wouldn't be blamed for thinking a knecht was a knight but it isn't a knecht is a servant but in my defense the words are related the english knights saw themselves as servants to their sovereign right or should that be richt mm -hmm. actually a german judge is a richter and they oversee the administration of recht so i think that one sort of counts anyway right those are all the tools you need to be a consonant trickster so let's put them to the test and bring back this from earlier and if you hadn't already worked out what this is it does tell you at the top targa's menu let's work our magic on the t and swap it for a d and the g for a y and we get something very close to day's menu mm. this is a menu of the day's specials so what's for starters Kramiger Karottensuppe. Well, already we see that we can do another G and Y swap in the first word, and we get much closer to the English word creamy. And then we can swap the K at the start of the next word with a C, although I suspect you'd already worked that one out. This is creamy carrot soup. Und is just German for and, and if you need any help with the last word, swap the T at the end for a D, hmm. and you can work out that that's bread. The next word is a bit tricky. You probably already know what a schnitzel is, a delicious breaded cutlet. But what about the start of the word, though? Well, swap the K with a C and the B with a V and you get calves. Does that look like any English word to you? Hmm. How about calves? Kalb is the German for veal, the meat of a young cow, a calf. Mit is just the German for with, and we came across Pfeffer earlier. It's our double whammy pea swap giving mm. us pepper. And sauce is conveniently the English spelling. There is a German word for sauce that is extremely similar, but the English, or rather French, is also used. On to our dessert. It's apple cake. The PF again swapped for a P gives us an apple. Then swapping the K for a C and the CH for a K gets us close enough to cake to work it out mm. like we did earlier on and then finally to the drink you actually have a choice of coffee or water if we swap the k for a c and that double s for a t although i'm sure the waiter will let you have both if you ask nicely enough so that's the full menu and there we have it what i've basically given you there is a lesson on germanic consonant <coughs> shift dressed up as some top tips for translating german but they really do work a lot of the time if you've enjoyed this, I've done a similar thing with French, or check out my guide to the dictionary's darkest secret. Again, I, if I'd known about these rules when I learned German in school, it would have just made it so much easier to start that process of learning the language. Uh, I can't remember how we did it, but I guess we just went straight into the smaller words and so on. But tell me what you think about that. It really definitely gives me an interest in learning more about actually learning German. So. I really enjoyed it. Tell me what you think about it. Thanks.